Thanks for joining me. I'm Corel Painter Master Aaron Rutten, and in this video, I'll show you how to use the Lightning Strikes brush pack for Corel Painter. Let's start with the first brush, and that is called Ball Light. I've gone ahead and created a new layer to paint on, and I'm going to change the composite method to screen. These brushes are all glow brushes, and so they're going to blend a lot better with what's underneath if you use a screen composite method. You'll also want to be choosing a color that's a bit darker than what you'd expect to get, because these brushes are gradually going to build up to white. So now if I tap and hold, I get this wonderful ball lightning. I could also make a smaller brush, and I could use it down here on the horizon to put in some little lights off in the distance. The next brush is called Cold Spark. I'm going to select a brighter blue color like this. Again, I'm still using a screen layer. And let's say where the lightning striking this tower in the distance, we'll have some cold sparks coming off of it like this. If you want bigger sparks, you can make your brush bigger. Moving on to the next brush, we have Emission, and this is the point where a lightning bolt might emit from the sky. So let's say we're going to have one right there. We can just tap in an Emission point. You can make your color darker if you want it to build up more slowly. I think I'll go ahead and do that. And then I'll create a new layer for a lightning bolt that's going to come out of that. I'm going to make sure to set the composite method to screen. And let's use Hot Bolt. I'm going to choose a color that's a bit darker here. Out of that emission point, we'll have this lightning that's kind of on fire. If you don't like that kind of lightning, there are other types as well. We're going to skip over hot spark and ionized for now. Let's move on down to ribbon. Let me make my color a bit brighter. We can have ribbon lightning that shoots across the sky like this. I'm varying my pen pressure so that I can have a thin line with light pressure or a thick line with heavy pressure. If you're slower, then your mark's going to be more even and consistent. If you move too quickly, there's going to be gaps in it. So you want to go relatively slow and just kind of zigzag your hand around. Beneath that, we have rough bolt. This is a rough lightning bolt. I'm going to pull down pretty quickly here, and that gives it time to be more jagged. If you move too slow, then it builds up on itself too much. So the quicker you can make this, the better. But because it has the rough edges, that's why it's called rough bolt. And if that's too thin for you, you can increase your brush size as well to get a thicker lightning bolt. Let's go ahead and skip over shock so that we can keep comparing these lightning bolts. I'm going to select solid bolt now. If we do a very quick straight line, then you can see it's still a little bit jagged, but not as jagged as the rough bolt was. So you can get something that's a bit more precise with this particular lightning bolt brush. The next brush is called spider. And if we kind of pull off of the edges of this lightning bolt that we already created, you can get these kind of spidery legs that come off of the lightning bolt. We'll skip over strike for now, and we'll move on to the next lightning bolt type, and that is thick bolt. This is a big, thick lightning bolt that's very opaque and bold. After that is wavy bolt. If we pull down quickly with that, you can see it's more wavy and the curves are more smooth rather than being jagged and angular. So again, you could use this to pull off of existing lightning bolts. You could do something kind of like that. And then the last lightning bolt type is called Wild Bolt. Now Wild Bolt is a little wild. You can try it and see, but as you pull down with it, it gets kind of stuck and then it jumps around. And this makes it a lot more random. So you'll have a heck of a time getting it to go exactly where you want it, but that's kind of the point. It'll be more random and chaotic. and You won't know exactly where it's going to go. You will occasionally end up with this little additional mark up here. If you don't like that, just switch to your eraser and erase it. And if it's not lined up exactly where you want it, you can always free transform it as well. I can line it up better without a mission point there. Now you might be wondering how I make my lightning bolts glow. One way to do it is to select an airbrush, create a new layer, set that composite method of the layer to screen, and you can paint over the lightning bolt. Be very careful to keep your paint centered, and that will add a bit of a glow to it. If we do a before and after, you can see what that's doing. Now, I was being a little sloppy there. Again, you want to make sure that it's pretty well centered, so take your time. Or what you can do is you can right-click on the lightning bolt, you can duplicate it, and on that duplicate layer, you can go to Effects, Focus, Soften, and you can increase or decrease the amount until you can see a little bit of glow along the edge. Now if I duplicate that glow, then you'll see it starts to glow more and more as I duplicate it. You probably only really need to duplicate it a couple of times. 
we want to make sure that that glow remains a screen layer. I've gone ahead and merged those layers together so that we can see a before and after of the effect that that glow is having. So that brings us to the end of the lightning bolt types, but there's a few brushes that we skipped over that are kind of supplemental to the lightning bolts. Let's go to Hot Spark. I'm going to create a new layer to paint on. I'm going to set the composite method to screen, and I'll choose kind of a dark yellow color. Now this brush is going to shoot out sparks from the center, so my center point is going to be right here on the tower. I'll just tap and hold and I get those sparks that fly off of the tower. And I could tap to keep building them up like so. Put some over here on this tree, coming off of it like that. You do have some control over the sparks if you want to dig around in your advanced brush controls. And then look under Particles Common. You can increase or decrease the count. So if I do a lower count, I'll get fewer sparks. If I set it really low, then I'll get just a few. Or if I set it much higher, then I'll get many, many sparks. The next brush is called Ionized. I'm going to go ahead and just sample this sky color here. And I'll just paint with light pressure here, and you can see I can create these nice glowing clouds. This works great for painting storm scenes and night cloud scenes. As you start to build it up, it'll get lighter and lighter, so you can imply a light source. You can also change the composite method just to a normal or default layer. And you could use it to put in darker, more opaque clouds as well. Moving on down, the next brush is Shock. I want to use kind of a dark blue color. I'll just tap and hold, and you can see I can create these nice shock marks. So if you were using this lightning for fantasy art, if the lightning struck a character or a monster, then you could have this shock come off of it. But you could also use this to put lights in the distance if you're painting a night scene, or you could use it for stars in the sky. If you make a bigger, broader brush, then you'll get a broader shock. It's a pretty versatile brush. Moving on down to the next brush, that is Strike. And we use this to create that lightning strike on the tree. We'll pull a lightning bolt off of this one and we'll have it hit this tree. And now we can add the strike. I'll choose a dark orange color. I'll just tap and hold and let it build up. And choose a lighter, brighter orange. That way it has a mixture of the yellows and reds in it. And then, of course, if you combine that with the hot sparks, then you can get a really interesting effect as if the lightning is hitting that tree. So there you go. That's a demonstration of how to use the Lightning Strikes brush pack for Corel Painter. If you enjoyed this video, take a quick second to click the like button. And if you're new to this channel, make sure to subscribe to get more Corel Painter tutorials like this. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.